of the legislative branch. And it's not that one branch is more powerful or more influential than the other, because both are necessary in order for something to be passed and sent on to the president for his signature. But the lower house are those House of Representatives that are elected to two-year terms. Senators are elected to six-year terms. It is thought then that those in the House of Representatives are those individuals in Washington that are more in tune with their constituents, that they should be in touch with us. They should know what is on our hearts. They should know what it is that concerns us so that when they go to Washington and discuss the important matters that are placed before them, they know how we would feel about those things. So when I think about someone representing someone else, I think of one as a substitute. There are our substitute in Washington. We don't all get to go to Washington and play a role in those bills or laws that are being passed. They are there to be in our place. Now, when I begin to think about substitute, I can't help but when we took it from the secular realm and put it within our Christian realm, we can't help but first speak about the one who took our place, Jesus himself. We are in the midst of Lenten season, and we focus upon, then, his journey to the cross. The necessity of that journey when Jesus said to his disciples, it is necessary for the Son of Man to be handed over to the chief priests, scribes, elders, teachers of the law, to suffer these things and to die. And it is indeed, and it was necessary for Jesus to go through those things. However, it wasn't necessary in his behalf. It was necessary in our behalf. Paul really points attention to that aspect of things when he said about Jesus, he who knew no sin became sin for us. That's what happened at the cross. Jesus became sin for us. Jesus took our place on Calvary's cross. Jesus suffered and died the death that we ourselves really deserved. Jesus was our substitute. That's an amazing concept to, to think about, isn't it? That he suffered and died for us. For you and for me, just so that we may be God's own. And now, after his resurrection and ascension, he has made us, or appointed us, to be his substitutes now in this place. Go ye therefore, he says in Matthew 28, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. He has given us that awesome and wonderful privilege of being his representative, his substitute in this place. And people, my friends, are watching. And by the way we live and represent him, they will determine whether or not being a Christian is something that would interest them. We dare represent him well. Following the example that he has placed before us, 
being encouraged by words such as Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate with one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God has forgiven you. May we represent him well. Another aspect in which our representative serves for us is speaking in our behalf. In keeping in touch and in tune with us, they should know what it is that the issues that concern us here in Midwest, here in Central Iowa. So that when they go and make those decisions, they may speak in our behalf. Jesus came among us and he spoke truth to lies. And he says that he is the way, that he is the truth, that he is the life. It is he that says in our gospel reading for today, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But he has given us that awesome privilege of speaking his message to the people who are around us. Isn't that the, the mission? Isn't that the task of the church? And wasn't that assignment then given to each and every one of us? It wasn't just given to the pastors of our congregations. That great commission is spoken to each and every one of us. Paul says in Romans 10, right, how can they believe if they have not heard? And how can they hear unless someone is sent? Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. You, my friend, bring good news. And you have amazing news to share with the people around you. It is through the power of that word that God creates and nurtures and sustains faith in the hearts of its hearers. Because we live in a world today that is hurting. Many of us are concerned about what is going on in Ukraine and how that might affect us in the long term. Many of us are worried about what is happening in our own communities as crimes seem to be running rampant among us. Many of us no longer feel safe in our own homes, and the last things we do before we head off to bed is to go around and make sure that our doors and windows are locked. It is a difficult time in which we live, and it is an important time that we bring God's message to them, to assure them that we have a God who loves and cares for us. We have a God who has said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. We have a God who has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Boy, isn't there a great comfort in hearing such a message? To hear the message that no matter what comes our way in life, we have already triumphed over all those things because of the victory our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ won for us at Calvary's cross. How he defeated our greatest enemy of sin, death, and the power of the devil. How he has brought life and immortality to life that we look forward to not this life, but to the better life that is yet to come. And we get the awesome privilege of speaking that message to people who need that message more today than they ever have before. Those who serve us in Congress are not only our substitute, not only speak in our behalf as we speak in behalf of our Savior, but they serve us as well. In the words of our Lord, rings boldly in my ears. Because here is the King of Kings, 
Here is the Lord of Lords. Here is the one that created the heavens and the earth and all that is contained within them. And he himself says, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. Well, if there's anyone who would deserve to be served, wouldn't it be our King of Kings and Lord of Lords? But no, he doesn't do that. Instead, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords serves us. He gives his life in our behalf, and he gives us as his representatives the opportunity then to serve his church, to serve our fellow man, to serve our neighbors and the people within our own communities. I would venture to say that each and every one of us knows somebody who is hurting in some way. Whether it be physically, whether it be emotionally, whether it be spiritually, I'm sure that there is someone you can think of at this moment in time that would need a friend that would love to have a listening ear, that needs a word of hope and a word of encouragement. What a wonderful way to serve them, but to make yourself available to them. I reflect in my days serving Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Farnaville. I served them 17 years. Now, I remember a member of our community, not a member of my congregation, but a member of our community lost his son. Died in a tragic car accident. So one day, as I was among the community, I stopped in his, to his place of employment, and I asked him simply, how are you doing? made myself available to him to listen to the things that were on his heart that day. And he shared how things had changed so dramatically in his grief and in his loss. Because he didn't lose only his son. He lost friends. Because people who knew him would now, he said, walk on the other side of the street rather than engage with him. And no doubt, they were uncomfortable. No doubt, they feared saying the wrong thing. And so, in their minds, it was better to say nothing at all. And he felt abandoned. What joy it was to be able to assure him that God had not abandoned him. He may have felt abandoned by those near and dear to him, but God had not left him. That in the midst of his grief, he still had that comfort and that assurance that Jesus himself had said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. And I had the opportunity to assure him and encourage him in the midst of his grief to serve him in such a small way. I encourage you to do that with someone you know. Yes, as I reflect back to those days of my high school youth, and I remember Mr. Hansen, I would say today, Mr. Hansen, I was paying attention. Even though you would have found me playing tic-tac-toe in the back of the class with Kim, the long auburn-haired cheerleader, I was listening. May we listen to God's word this day. May we, as his representative, serve as his substitute in this place at this time. May we speak his word of truth to those who need it. May we offer ourselves in service to those who could use it. That we may truly be 
his disciple and Christ's representative. Amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the following verses of Chief of Sinners Though I Be. continue our service with the gathering of the offering. Almighty God, gracious Heavenly Father, we give back a portion of what you have so graciously bestowed to us, your servants. We pray that you would bless these offerings that we place before you, that they may be used to bring a blessing to your people and to the extending of your church here on earth. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We rise and continue with the prayers of the church. They will end, Lord, in your mercy. You will respond. Hear our prayer. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. Give us a proper knowledge of the evil we have done in your sight. Move us to confess our offense against you and justify us by your holy absolution. Lord, in your mercy. Father in heaven, you welcome us into your family for the sake of your Son. Call us to repentance when we wander from your ways. 
or believe we have earned a place in your household by our works. And return us to the confident joy that in Christ alone we are found and alive. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have made your deeds known among us. Bless our pastors, teachers, musicians, and all church workers in their daily labors to make known your deeds among the peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we are brought forth in iniquity and conceived in sin. Make us ever grateful that in holy baptism you forgave and enliven even the smallest child. And that for Jesus' sake you wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from our sin. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, in Christ you were reconciling the world to yourself. Watch over our nation and all whom you have placed in authority. Give them wisdom and prudence that your people might live in peace and freely make known the message of reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers for all who cry out to you for mercy, healing, and help. We lift before you this day Kathy McNeil, hospitalized. We pray you be with Troy Hoyer, Barb Rather, Dale Gherkin, Lonnie Gherkin, Dwayne Johnson, Nancy Mann. Bless these, your servants, Lord, in their time of need, that they may have the awareness of your constant presence among them. Be with those who are in long-term care facilities, Gary Anderson and June Saxton. Assure them, too, that even in such a place, you have not left them, neither have you abandoned them. But give them the awareness of your constant presence among them, that faith may be encouraged and strengthened. Lord, we offer up a prayer of thanksgiving in behalf of Pastor Kendall Meyer. We thank you, Lord, that you guided the hands of the surgeons and the medical teams that did the most marvelous work in Pastor's behalf. We pray now as he has returned home that each and every day he may experience the healing touch uh, that comes from your good and gracious hands, that hearing may be restored to him. Lord, we pray for Pastor John Janke and his family, St. Paul and the congregations in Minnesota that have extended to him calls. Give pastor guidance and direction at this time. That the decision he may make is a decision that will be God-pleasing. A decision that would be beneficial to your kingdom, whether it is to serve here or to serve your people in another place. That the faith and the heart of the hearers, wherever he may be, may be encouraged and strengthened. Lord, we pray for those who mourn as well. We remember the family of Vernon Sindler, who was laid to rest this week. We remember the family of Jeff Tomlinson, who laid to rest this week as well. Lord, be with these family members in their time of grief and sorrow. Let the light of your gospel shine brightly in their darkness, that it may illumine the way to hope and joy once again that sorrow may be replaced with that joy as they take comfort in the promise that our Lord gave that he was indeed the life and the resurrection. Be with those tornado survivors as they clean up. Be with Ukraine and Russia in the midst of their turmoil. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Deliver them according to your will and us you have made them a new creation in Christ. Keep them mindful of the day when sorrow and sickness will be no more. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of glory, fill the hearts of your people 
in all their various callings with the joy of your salvation, that they may make known in all the earth, Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We would take opportunity at this time to share the Lord's peace with one another in remembrance, of course, as a sign of reconciliation and our unity in the spirit uh, of the bond of peace that God, through Christ, has given us. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we conclude our service with the closing hymn, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Amen. 